I'm here with Bob DeCarolis, the athletic director here at Oregon State University. How are you doing tonight, Bob? Good, Julia. How are you doing? Good. Um, what can Beaver fans um, expect as far as improvements to uh, the athletic facilities um, this year? I know there's a new weight room. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. The Sports Performance Center just opened up this past week. It's uh, the red brick building located right behind Gill Coliseum. Okay. 17,000 square feet on the first floor, which is all weight equipment for all of our sports. So that's pretty unusual that you'd have all your sports in one building, but it works well for us. And then the second floor, it's a 7,000 square foot uh, wrestling room. So okay. our wrestlers now don't have to share time in Langton Hall. They can have a dedicated space for them on the athletic campus. Now, um, obviously, uh, gymnasts need different training than soccer players or football. How do you focus the, the training and the equipment there in That's one That's a great space? question. Uh, normally, your head football weight training coach is in charge of everything. We've got it a little bit different. We hired a guy by the name of Jeff Macy who came from the Chicago Bulls, has a basketball wow. background. And he was able to hire his own staff that all that worked for him during his time at the Bulls. So okay. philosophically, they're all on the same page and, and works a little bit like a emergency room, if you will, that a, any weight coach can coach any team in any particular time because they know what the core exercises are for each and each sport. But then the specificity of each sport then goes goes into the detail. And so they're able to pick that up. Oh, wow. Okay, now it's been mentioned that OSU is planning on bringing back a men's track team. Um, what kind of has facilitated this? Does that have anything to do with the success of the women's track team? That's well, we have a proposal on the table to bring back the program. It, we, it's, a, it's a little ticklish because you have Title IX implications yeah. um, with that. But uh, really what the plan is first is to build the track. I mean, that's one thing that we don't have right now, even though we brought back the women's um, cross-country and track program. So the idea is to get the men involved also to help fundraise for the track. The track's in two phases. First phase is just basically the track um, and the interior field that would be a, a f artificial turf. That's about $4 million. And then oh, wow. the rest of it, the stands, parking lot, amenities around it would be about two and a half million. So that's the first two phases of that project. But then to pick up the men's program, we're looking at about a $5 million endowment to endow the operating expenses of the uh, track program okay. and that would enable us to have a legitimate um, uh, program as far as recruiting equipment uh, travel those kinds of things so the time frame is basically do phase one of the track first then try to get the five million for the endowment and then once you've got that established then get two and a half million to finish the job so it definitely wouldn't be in the next couple of years? Then. No, we're, we're looking at, well, we hope to do the track maybe within the next 24 months and then the next two years get that out of the way and get that, that at least built. And then hopefully by 2010, 11, at least announce that you're gonna bring back track, mm -hmm. um, hire a coach, and then probably have an 18 month startup time where you can start recruiting so probably in the 212, 213 range, you would look at something like that. And then the money would have to come in over the next five years. So it's not like you have to have all the money up front. Okay. Now, if the men's track came back, would that mean like women's, would there be cross country with the track team as well? Right. There'd be cross country and, and track, right. And, and track is divided into two sections. You have, well, three sections. You have cross country, mm -hmm. then you have indoor track if you so choose to run that, and then you have outdoor track. So it's three separate um, eligibility requirements. So you could basically be eligible in one and, and not eligible in the other. So it's, it's a little complicated, but it counts for three different sports. Would we plan to have then all three entities um, kind of invest in that, the indoor, outdoor, and the cross country? Or? It would depend on the coach. Like right now, Kelly Sullivan on the women's side mm -hmm. uh, is not a big fan of the indoor um, schedule because he just thinks it's too much of a wear and tear on the kids' bodies, okay. particularly coming off of cross country. So for, um, say, like the high jumpers or the, the, uh, the uh, throw, the javelin, those people, that's a little different story. But for the kids that are training all year long, to have three competitive seasons is a little tough. So he opts to do cross country and then outdoor and, okay. and, and bypass the indoor season. So it's kind of a coach perspective. Yeah. Now, um, where can Beavers go if they're interested in donating to that OSU track? Hey, we'd this? love to hear from yeah. you. 1-800-GO-BEES is our ticket line, and okay. then if you uh, get in that number, you can also contact the Beaver Athletic Student Fund, uh -huh. and uh, we have representatives uh, all day long in, in there that, that would love to talk to you about your interests. So they just call 1-800-GO-BEES? 1-800-GO-BEES is the easiest way to get in there. All right, well, on behalf of everyone here on the Beaver Sports Show, thanks for being here tonight. Bob. Thanks for having me.
All right, remember to go to 1-800-GO-BEEVES and donate to that new track facility.